हेलो एवरीवन आई मिसेस मीनाक्षी श्री गांधी फ्रॉम वॉल्चन इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी शोलापुर वेलकम टू द वीडियो लेक्चर ऑन स्टैक एप्लीकेशन स्टैक इन रिकर्शन लर्निंग आउटकम एट द एंड ऑफ दिस सेशन स्टूडेंट विल बी एबल टू एक्सप्लेन द एप्लीकेशन ऑफ स्टैक इन रिकर्शन लेट सी द एप्लीकेशन ऑफ स्टैक as we already know that stack is a lipo structure that is the last item to be inserted is the first item to be removed its application can be seen in execution of sub programs in a computer system where before a sub program executes its task it pushes its written address on the stack and after the execution of its task it comes back to the stack and pops the written address and then it goes to the main function application of stack can also be seen in recursion recursion is nothing but when a function call itself here also before the function executed task it saves a written address on the stack and after the execution of its task it comes to the stack and pops a written address stack application can also be seen in expression evaluation of postfix string and expression conversion from infix notation to postfix notation let's see what is recursion is recursion is nothing but something which is expressed in terms of itself so it is useful in solving problems that can be broken down into smaller problems of same kind so recursion is a process of expressing a function in terms of itself here you can see that a function f of x is repeatedly calling itself which is representing a recursion let's see the difference between iterative and recursive definition to explain this difference we are taking the factorial example so let's see the factorial using iterative definition here n factorial is equal to 1 if n is equal to 0 and if n is greater than 0 then n is multiplied to n minus 1 which is again multiplied to n minus 2 this process is continued till 1 is reached for example to calculate 4 factorial 4 is multiplied to 4 minus 1 that is 3 again 3 is multiplied to 3 minus 1 that is 2 and 2 is multiplied to 2 minus 1 that is equal to 1 which results to 24 to find the factorial of 3 3 is multiplied to 3 minus 1 that is 2 2 is again multiplied to 2 minus 1 that is 1 which gives the result as 6 to find the 2 factorial 2 is multiplied to 2 minus 1 that is 1 which results to 2 so in short we can say that iterative process gives the explicit repetition of a process until a certain condition is met so in this example here the repetition is done till 1 is reached let's see the factorial using recursive definition so n factorial is equal to 1 if n is equal to 0 and if n is greater than 0 then n is multiplied to n minus 1 factorial let's see the example by using recursive definition So 4 factorial is calculated as 4 into 3 factorial and 3 factorial is is equal to 3 into 2 factorial and 2 factorial is equal to 2 into 1 factorial and 1 factorial is equal to 1 into 0 factorial So a recursive definition defines an object in terms of a simple case of itself try to think an answer to write a c routine to find the factorial of a number using recursive definition here we are trying to write the recursive routine for finding factorial of a number so we are finding the factorial of n for this a variable x has been declared if the number is equal to 0 then written a 1 if number is not equal to 0 if it is greater than 0 then 
n minus 1 value is stored in x then we are returning n into factorial of x here you can see that the factorial function is invoked again but with x which is nothing but n minus 1 now for writing any recursive routine there are two conditions that must be satisfied for any recursive procedure the first is the base case the base case is the smallest value which is executed without recursion and which is the decision criterion for stopping the recursive procedure and the second is the general method which makes any particular case to reach nearer in some sense to the base case and in this factorial function each time the function call itself its argument is decremented by one so that the argument becomes smaller and ultimately reach to the value zero which is the base case in this case let's see the general algorithm for recursive procedure before any recursive procedure is executed first we need to save the parameters local variables and written address on the stack then we need to test for the base criterion if the base criterion has been reached then we need to perform the final computation and we need to go to step 3 if the base criterion has not been reached in that case we need to perform the partial computation and go to step 1 and repeat the process again with reduced parameter values if the base criterion has been reached in that case we need to restore the most recently saved parameters local variables and written address then after that we need to go to this written address now let's see how stack is used in recursion to explain the same again we are taking the factorial example here we are trying to show you how the star grows for each recursion call so initially you can see that these are the stack elements ivan is representing the initial written address n is representing the number 4 for which the factorial has to be calculated and x is equal to 3 which is equal to n minus 1 so in this n is 4 so 4 minus 1 is equal to 3 now top is pointing to factorial which has to be calculated for the second recursion call you can see that the stack has been grown by size 4 again so i2 is indicating the written address and n is now reduced to 3 and x is now equal to n minus 1 that is equal to 2 now top is pointing to factorial which has to be calculated so after the fourth recursion call you can see that the size of the stack has still grown so i2 is indicating the written address and n is equal to 0 which is the base case and top is now pointing to factorial which has to be calculated so this is how the stack grows for each recursion call now in this we will see how the stack shrinks after each recursion call is completed so initially when n is equal to 0 which is indicating the base case in that case our written value is equal to 1 after the next recursion call has been completed you can see that the factorial 1 and the number n are multiplied and the written value is 1 after the next recursion call has been completed the factorial 1 and the number n is equal to 2 these are multiplied and the written value is 2 after the next recursion call has been completed the factorial 2 and the number n equal to 3 these are multiplied and the written value is equal to 6 and after the last recursion call has been completed the factorial 6 and the number n equal to 4 these are multiplied and the written value is 24 so you can see that i1 is equal to 24 which is the final value which is returned to the main function which is the result for the factorial of 4 let's see the flowchart for a recursive process before executing any recursive process First, we need to save the formal parameters, local variables and written address on the stack. Then we need to test for the base case. If the base case has not been reached, then in that case we need to perform the partial computation. Then we need to call the recursive procedure again with reduced parameter values. But if the base case has been reached, 
then we need to perform the final computation and then we need to restore the most recently saved formal parameters, local variables and written address. And after this we need to go to this written address. These are my references. Thank you.